Some not clicking. Disney. Some not clicking. Y'all, I'm very aware that Disney lurks on my channel, like the heads of Disney. So if you're watching this and you work for Disney, hey girl, how you doing? Hey guys, Hariana and I'm back with another video. Hello, my name is Hariana. If you're new and this is your first time ever seeing me, welcome to, or you're returning, welcome back to the pirate ship, also known as Harry Hook's pirate ship. I am the captain, you are not my first mate, I don't got no first mate, nobody's worthy of being a first mate. Um, before we even get started, um, thank you guys so much for all like the support that you've been giving me over that last video and that situation that situation hasn't really gotten any better and i'm like this close to taking legal action because it's just that re damn ridiculous i honestly still not feeling too well because of that like i'm just physically and emotionally drained i had to cancel going to my in-person job because i just didn't feel up for going because of all this draining me but life still gotta go on just because something bad happens to you you can't just put your life on hold and you have to continue that's just adulthood that's just adulting you have to keep going you have to move on so i do apologize if my mood is just not there for this video and i also do apologize for reading directly from the outline in this video too because I'm trying my best to just push through and get things done, but it's just hard right now. It's just really hard right now, but I cannot afford to take a break, if that makes sense. Like, people keep saying you can take a break, you come back when you're done, but I legit, <laughs> y'all, when you're sad, that's just the sad part of just being an adult. When you're sad, you still have to work. When you're anxious, you still have to work. When you're having a bad episode, you have to keep working, and yeah so i'm gonna have a nice little story time for you guys and today this isn't clickbait so yeah this actually happened and like i said because of just how bad i'm feeling i truly do sorry for another poorly edited video where i am just directly reading from the outline but bills gotta be paid so let's continue and let's go on so like I said, this is not clickbait, this actually happened, and this also is just kind of like the perfect time to post this video. With the release of the show that I worked on, and then this situation that's happening around the same time, we just need to have a talk about what's going on in the film industry, specifically the North American film industry, because it is atrocious, okay? It is re damn ridiculous, okay? So for those of you guys that don't know what's going on, we did speak about this in one of my live streams, it's the live stream where I titled it like we need to talk about the IOTC strike but in that sh um stream this is basically a little bit of what I had spoke about so you don't know what's going on the film industry is going on strike and basically the crew members are the film industry I don't care what nobody else say y'all be talking about the directors the producers the showrunners the actors no the crew is the film industry they are the backbone for the film industry okay okay y'all got that clear let's continue okay so the film industry is going on strike and when I say the film industry I am talking about the crew which is the members of IATSE. The members of the union IATSE are going on strike and for those of you guys that don't know what IATSE is it stands for International Alliance for Theatrical Stage Employees. So it's a union not only for theater but it's also for film. So basically this is the union that crew members join for the film industry and those who are a part of IIT when I say crew these are the people I'm talking about um house workers wardrobe attendees hair and makeup artists motion picture and television producer production technicians broadcasting technicians scenic artists designers animators audio visual technicians like those people okay basically the people who make everything happen basically the people that make everything look good okay the crew members are the backbone of this film industry okay your hoes will look like shit without the crew yeah 
they will look like shit without the stand-ins and the photo doubles and the actors also but we're gonna get there later in a second okay these are the people that make things look good so now we're gonna get into what a typical day on a film set looks like a typical day on set usually for those that are not acting or directing which is a majority of the people on set y'all there are way more people on set than just like the actors the director and the producer there's probably a hundred other people back there and that are on a film set so yeah and these people are usually overworked and underpaid they have early ass call times at the ass crack of dawn and they get out when everybody is getting ready to go to the club or go to bed okay so basically another way of saying what these hours are like you have to get there before everything open and then you get out when everything is closed okay the hours on set are atrocious the hours on set are terrible okay which is why everybody that works in this film industry is cranky okay that's why i don't really take it to heart no more when somebody is weird um rude to me on set um because I I, I completely understand. We're all sleep deprived and depressed. I get it. So in the film industry, sometimes you have to do something called a night shoot. And basically a night shoot is when you shoot at nighttime. That's literally what it is. It's self-explanatory, okay? Night shoots don't always mean that you have to shoot outside in the dark because a lot of times when you do night shoots or overnight shoots, usually it's because we need to get scenes outside when it's nighttime, when it's dark outside. But not all the time when you are doing a night shoot doesn't mean it's going to be outside. I have done numerous night shoots where we were filming indoors, but we just the timing just went like that okay sometimes the schedule just needs you to be there at night you gotta get there sometimes you'll get a 6 p.m call time sometimes you'll get a 3 p.m call time sometimes you'll get a 3 a.m call time sometimes you'll get a 5 p.m call time it you never know but like a typical time to get a call time on set would be like 7 6 5 a.m that's about like a usual time if overnight you're most likely going to get like a 3 p.m 4 p.m 5 p.m 6 p.m so yeah also of night shoots many night shoots happen on friday which is why we call it friday okay and friday basically means when friday goes into saturday morning friday night goes into saturday morning sunday really is kind of like the only real day of rest that people in this film industry get and then you're back again working early monday morning so it's just kind of like this endless cycle of barely having any time for yourself okay you barely have nights off and you only get like one day off out of the week and it is extremely exhausting okay you barely have time for any leisure time okay that's why so many people who work in the film industry are not really up to date on films and television shows and all that stuff because they genuinely just don't have the time to watch them okay and the time that they do have they are spending that time sleeping so i'm not a part of iit but i have worked on film sets before as an extra specialty extra photo double and stand in okay so our hours are pretty much the same so i can relate to them on that we're all there at the ass crack of dawn and get out when everybody's at the club okay so for those who are a part of IIT, they're a part of probably like SAG, you know, directors, all that, or they're non-union. So non-union includes the stand-ins, photo doubles, PAs, and extras. And y'all, PAs be holding it down. PAs deserve way more credit and props, okay? PAs are amazing. PAs are the backbones of set. They are the reason why the set has not burned down yet, okay? I have told myself that I don't think I would make a good PA because the set will burn down. I cannot. I wouldn't. I could not work that well under stress. I work under stress all the time. I'm working under stress right now, okay? But the things that PAs put up with, we gotta give them a hand, okay? We gotta give them a round of applause, okay? So, those who are also treated terribly are a part of the IOTC and the people that are not a part of IOTC are also being treated terribly, okay? This affects way too many people, okay? This affects the people within the union and the people not in the union. So it's an extremely big issue. So that's how you guys can figure out what goes on with film sets and it's extremely dangerous to be working these long ass hours because people have had numerous mental and physical health issues okay i have had so many issues with my stomach since i started working on set okay and then car accidents are a big thing okay because we're so tired and so out of it we get into car accidents i have gotten in a car accident um uh, because i was so tired from a day on set so yeah that's horrible very very horrible 
And for those of you who know, like Rona has been around. Rona is not going anywhere anytime soon, sadly. So the film industry basically had to adapt to the pandemic as everyone else is we've had to adapt to the personal pan pizza instead of y'all getting around to it okay but i'm gonna just keep all my little covid opinions to myself because i'm just so angry that we're still stuck in this shit okay so it's contributed another issue to this film industry aside from all the mess that we have going on then COVID really has just contributed us to another issue within this industry. As many film sets do not follow Rona safety protocols correctly, leading them into catching it, okay? And there have been so many people that have caught Rona when they went back to work on set. It's so freaking sad. It's just so tragic, y'all. Okay, and crew members and many other people have had enough, okay? Uh, it was like COVID was like the last straw for so many people in this industry and they were like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not doing this no more, okay? So one positive thing that this pandemic has showed us is that we are worth more than just paying bills, okay? We are worth more than just paying bills and dying, okay? We shouldn't have to work under horrible conditions for a paycheck, okay? I'll go ahead and tell you, many of the people that work in this industry, they love their jobs, okay? Many people, most people for the most part, that work in the film industry really love their jobs. But the conditions are just not okay. The things that they have to do to keep their job are not okay, okay? They're literally working under horrible conditions for a paycheck, like I said earlier, okay? So since the pandemic, most of what I have worked on was just pretty horrible, y'all. I thought working on set was terrible before as an extra. It is atrocious now, okay? It is just beyond garbage, okay? It's gone from worse to worser, okay? Don't that ring a bell for like my last video? I know you're tired of having crusty ass lips. Wearing a mask all the time gives you no excuse. Head over to harianahook.com. Oh, you don't want that? Well, she has a bunch of other things to choose from. Don't worry. Pick yourself up some super cute because you're like super cute and stuff. Now that you know the background on this industry and what we have to deal with, I want to tell you guys a little story about how I got kicked off the set of Just Beyond, a show that is on Disney+. Plus. Your girl got kicked off a Disney set. That is one thing. Like when, okay, it doesn't sound surprising because y'all y'all know me. Y'all wouldn't be surprised, okay? A lot of people aren't surprised when I told them I got kicked off a Disney set. But when they found out what it was for, they were like very disappointed. So I'm going to tell you guys about how I got kicked off the set of Disney just beyond okay you don't know what just beyond is it's basically an anthology series it's basically the haunting hour on pg a little bit in between pg and pg 13 that's what it is it's just the haunting hour all over again it's just goosebumps all over again and it's created by rl stein who i think is so so amazing okay rl stein is the goat okay so i don't have an agency if you want to get speaking roles on big name television shows most of the time nine times out of ten you can have an agent i have gotten auditions for big tv shows that weren't through an agent and they were only like small little side roles i didn't get them but you know it doesn't hurt to try so i don't have an agency so extras casting was up for the show and i was really excited because i love rl stein and i've always wanted the pleasure of working on one of his projects so i signed up to be an extra in just beyond and i signed up and i got it and anyone that knows like working in the film industry you have to get tested before you can work on set because of rona so i had to get tested twice okay i got tested twice both came back negative so yeah i was cleared i was good to go to work on just beyond so the first day of working on just beyond it was really weird for the most part it was very very weird okay film sets 
people are required to wear these masks called KN95s, okay? I don't know if I have one in my room. These really are kind of like the only masks that I really wear now. But if you've seen me like on my Instagram page before when I'm on my story and whatnot, you would see me wear a KN95. And it's literally like those thick masks that like you can't poke nothing through it or whatever. I know plenty of you guys have seen pictures of when um actors have been on set and they've been posting like behind the scene pictures of them and their masks and whatnot. That is called a KN95. It's basically the best mask for when you're working around a lot of people and whatnot. So why when I'm on the set of Just Beyond and I get there, uh, I had my, um, I had like a medical mask and then I had like a KN95 mask. Usually if I come to set in a medical mask, they would tell me to switch it out and they would give me a KN95. That did not happen. Nope. That did not happen. So I, I ended up putting my own KN95 on because no one gave me one. Why was only a few people in the crew? It, the crew okay that was crew members not wearing the correct mask okay but there was a few people in the crew wearing a kn95 barely any of the extras was wearing a kn95 the standards were not wearing a kn95 okay nobody was also social distancing by the way so yeah usually on film sets we're supposed to be like six feet apart unless we also definitely have to be up under each other because there's some things that you can't get if the people aren't close to each other i i understand that but the crew all up on each other okay when we was in the extra toning area, everybody was all up on each other, okay? Nobody was social distancing. Everybody was all up on each other. Chairs in the sitting area were not spread apart like they were supposed to. So, yeah. It was sus. I didn't feel safe. So, yeah. For the most part, the people that were all, like, extras, they were all pretty friendly. Like, everybody was pretty friendly. I have worked on sets before where the background was not so nice, but everybody that was an extra on Just Me I was pretty, pretty chill, okay? We were all in, like, the age range of, like, early 20s. So, yeah, because this took place in high school, and they needed adults that looked like kids, and those are the only roles that I get. It pays the bills. <laughs> but, yeah. The crew was okay. They weren't super nice, but they weren't really mean to us. A lot of crew, they just kind of ignore the extras. They're just kind of there, and we are just kind of there for the most part. But sometimes there are crew that are, like, really, really mean to extras. But the crew here, they, they were okay. Nothing. So, we did what we had to do for the day. We had to go get tested for Rona again. We did that. And then, yeah, um, we went home. So, one thing about it, if you test positive on set... You are told that you can't come to set, okay? Basically, if they contact you and tell you, that's what they're supposed to do. If they contact you and tell you, hey, you tested positive, you cannot come, that is what they're supposed to do. Usually, if you test negative, they not gonna say nothing, okay? They, they you're good to go, you're clear to work, okay? So then, the next day was when it all went downhill, okay? Woo! That is a whole completely different story. So let's go ahead and get into day two of me working on Just Me On. So that morning of, I got a message about my COVID test results. I, like, took a glimpse at it. I didn't really look at the whole thing. I knew I didn't have it because, like I said, if I had it, they would have told me. They would have contacted me and told me I couldn't come to set that day. So I knew I was good. No one contacted me. So I went checked in i was sitting with a really really friendly group of women they were all so sweet all so nice okay and we were talking about like our interests and things like that we were just having like a really good nice chat before we had to go take in the set so they were telling me about what it was also like working on the show being an extra in this show and whatever and they were all talking i was pretty chill they weren't the best with the covid guidelines too that was another thing they told me also so then they began to send us to set. They began taking us in like groups. And mind you, it wasn't really that many of us. There was like a big group of another set of extras that came earlier that day. So it wasn't that many of us left. It was probably about like 30 of us in there. So they began sending us like a little by little to set. So it wouldn't be everybody just rushing in there. And um, they said everybody to set but me. They said my government name. I know. I'm still trying to get used to like using my stage name when I'm working out in public and things like that because I really just prefer to go by Hariana when it comes to my work but um yeah they said my government name 
they said government name stay in the tent so that's what i did i was just staying on the tent i had nobody to talk to i was lonely so i just kind of got on my phone and the next thing i know somebody from the rona department comes in there and they come up to me in the tent and they tell me how am i feeling they were like hey um how are you feeling and i was like i'm fine and they're like did you check your results and i was like hmm and she was like um we have in our database that you tested positive and i was like what you mean positive what you mean positive and i was just so confused like nobody wants to get rona okay nobody wants that okay so i was really really scared but i was also really really confused because i was like they would have told me not to come if i had it okay so before i could explain myself before i could open the message and look at it for myself thoroughly um they told me to leave like they they told me i had to leave they were like you gotta go home you you can't stay and i was like um okay like they basically just kicked me out and as soon as i like got out i gathered all of my stuff i had a lot of stuff with me because they want you to bring things with you to set i gathered all my stuff and then everybody was just standing outside like paranoid some people were annoyed some people were like scared and everybody just like turned their head to look at me when i got out of the tent and i felt so embarrassed like i've had like a lot of like embarrassing stories from like childhood and like even high school where like everybody was just staring at me and everyone's eyes were on me and things like that and that's what it really felt like i just felt really low in that moment and everybody was just staring at me like i had a disease like i was so I felt terrible y'all like of course I everybody did think I had a disease I thought I had a disease or something but everybody was just looking at me like I was just this infected person and I was just like <sighs> so I went behind the tent um looked up my COVID test results and it said negative yeah it said negative so i was really really confused i didn't know what was going on so next thing you know i called my dad he was the first person i told told him i tested positive and i didn't want him telling my sister or my mom but he did it anyway and then all of them start panicking and it was not good it, it was very ghetto very very ghetto okay and i knew i was negative okay i knew i was negative okay one i don't leave the house and two i was fully vaccinated okay so i knew i didn't have it okay it there was just i understand you can still get it if you test um if you are vaxxed i understand you can still get it but i there was a 99.9% .9 chance that I was not going to get it because I didn't go nowhere. I only went to work and went home. I barely left the house to go get groceries or anything like that. So, yeah. I was just confused because the, the woman told me I was positive. Everybody else was telling me I was positive. But the results were right in my hand and the results said negative. Okay? So, I had to walk all the way back to my car by myself because, um everyone thought i had rona i wasn't allowed to get in the van they didn't call somebody from the um, transportation department to get me a shuttle back to uh extras parking so um i had to walk i had to walk all the way back over there to um yeah it was bad and i had to oh, oh my god like i'm getting mad i'm like slowly starting to get angry all over again i had all this stuff had to haul it back all the way over there i was just not it I, after that long ass walk i got in my car and i just broke down and cried and i cried and 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 cried, and cried, and cried, and cried. like it was just not good i cried a lot and i kept refreshing like the covid test results on my phone and it kept saying negative and negative and negative and negative and i told like a few of my friends that hey um apparently i have rona and they were like what that don't make no sense you don't go nowhere and then i showed them the test results and they were like this not making sense i was confused they were confused nothing was it people was contacting me about the progenies and i was like hey y'all we gonna have to hold off on the show for a while i'm gonna get there in a minute okay i was confused my dad told my sister and my mom they were panicking it was just a mess it was just a big fat ass mess so I drive up to Atlanta because the filming location we were at was 40 minutes south of Atlanta, okay? So I basically got in my car and I drive up to Atlanta and then I didn't want to go home. The first thing I knew, I didn't want to go home because if I had COVID, I didn't want to go home and give it to my family. And if they already had it, I don't know. I just didn't want to go home because I just wanted to make sure that I did not have it because these people kept telling me I had it, but I had the results in my hand that said I didn't have it. So yeah. 
So I started driving around looking everywhere. I was at CVS, I was at clinics and everywhere. I was just driving around looking for a place to where I can get a Rona test. I was just looking for a place where I can get a test and yeah, it was bad. So also another reason why I was panicking so bad is because we literally were shooting a project this weekend, okay? Though literally, not that weekend. No, it was that weekend. Literally was the next week we were beginning shooting the progenies, okay? And I already bought all the clothes. I bought all the equipment. I booked all the filming locations, okay? I literally already spent thousands of dollars on the progenies. I spent a whole bunch of money on the production. So for us not even to be able to do it was really scaring me, it was really concerning me. And I am a big thing, I have a big thing about saving money. I'm really big on saving money. I'm a good spender. I was getting mad because I was like, I felt like I wasted a whole bunch of my money. So it was just not good. It was just not not good, okay? So basically, if I was positive, we could not film the show. I was not about to sit there and infect my entire cast and crew of the progenies. I was not. I refused. I was not going to do that. I was not going to put all those people in danger. I was not going to do that. I was going to do the mature thing and just cancel it all. But I didn't want to do that until I found out if I didn't have it for sure. So... The main reason I was social distancing and staying home and having everything sent to my house instead of going to the store and only working on set after I like tested um, Rona and all that was so we could film the show. Like I legit did not know what was going on. So I did end up getting an appointment. I ended up getting an appointment and I was still sitting in my car crying thinking because I had Rona. So I just tried my best to calm down because I was like, okay, Maybe you actually don't have it and those people don't know what they're talking about. You don't know. Just go ahead and get this other test and then you'll see from there. So I ended up getting a phone call. I got a phone call. And basically this phone call came from the Rona department from Just Beyond. So, please tell me why. This is some bullshit right here. Okay, listen. Let me, I'm going to have them read it right here. They told me they got my results mixed up with somebody else's. And that I was really negative and I could come back to work tomorrow. I didn't go back to work the next day, by the way. I was too embarrassed to show my face for that specific episode again. I was just too embarrassed. I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to deal with it. I just felt so low in that moment. Like, I was pissed, okay? I said, okay, thank you, and I hung up. Like, I was just pissed. And another reason why I was just getting more and more pissed off is because that person didn't sound sorry. That person on the phone did not sound sorry. They were like, oh, we made a oopsies. That's it. No, that is not a oopsies. I'm sorry, ma'am. That is not a oopsies, okay? They didn't sound sorry at all. They were so nonchalant about it. So I was getting angry. I was like, my anger level was already right here because I was like, who the hell gave me Rona? And then I'm mad because they got my test results mixed up with somebody else's. And then I'm mad because they were so careless about it. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. You, somebody, no. Because that person could have gave it to somebody with a weakened immune system. And something bad could have happened to them, okay? Like, this is people's health that you are dealing with, okay? You cannot mix up people's health files. You can't do that. That is dangerous, okay? So, that person that tested positive, they might have still been on set. I don't know. I didn't go back for that episode. I was just irritated. And nothing was done about it. Nothing was done about it at all. Nope. And I genuinely just was frustrated. I didn't know what to do. So, I took my ass to Google. And I didn't know who to contact. So, I began just Googling anything about what was going on because I literally was sent home without pay. I don't play about my money. That is one thing that I don't pay play about. I was sent home without pay for no damn reason whatsoever, okay? So I went to Google and I was snitching. I don't care. I was about to snitch. I was going to snitch. I was like, who can I tell on right now? Because I was too mad, okay? So I found a phone number for Disney Public Safety, called them, talked to them, they did nothing, by the way. Are we surprised? No. But they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing, as they usually do. Okay? So, hmm. Then I contacted the extras casting department, okay? The people that I had gotten this job through, they are lovely people, by the way. They didn't do anything wrong in this situation. They are the most, they are the best people in this situation, by the way. I couldn't 
contact them by phone because they're getting numerous phone calls every day they honestly have to call people to get them to work they have they deal with a lot of phone calls okay so they said the best way to get in contact with them if they needed something was to email them so i sent them an email telling them everything that happened i told them my name i told them the show i was working on okay so that basically was just the end of that day when all that happened so the next day this transfers over to the next day i get a call from extras casting they told me that they had no idea that this happened until i sent them that email the production just beyond did not contact them about this at all Some not clicking. Disney. Some not clicking. Okay. So they contacted the production about it. The production didn't know. And they said they were going to pay me for that day. I was like, okay, thank you. At least I'm getting my paycheck for that day. The only people who, who told me sorry in this entire situation was extras casting. And they did nothing wrong. The people who did absolutely nothing wrong in this situation were the only ones who told me sorry. Y'all don't understand how low I was feeling after this. I felt extremely low. I felt so disrespected. I felt so embarrassed. I just genuinely didn't feel good, okay? Like, I don't... Words cannot describe that kind of embarrassment I felt. Like, I never thought that I would have been embarrassed like that ever again. Like, you know how, like, at um, middle school, like, you know that scene, like, in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, where everybody thought he had the cheese touch, and everybody was staring at him like he had the cheese touch? That's how I felt. <laughs> That's how I felt. I'm just trying to make light of this, like, situation. So, by the way, I did go back to work on Just Beyond for, like, another episode, and the people that were there when the incident happened, they were there and none of them told me sorry. None of them told me sorry. And y'all, let me just tell y'all. Let me just tell y'all. Um, You really are nobody in the film industry if you're an extra. You're really a nobody in the film industry if you are a stand-in. You are a nobody in the film industry if you are a photo double. You are a nobody in this industry if you are a PA. You are no one. You are nobody, okay? You are a nobody. Numerous dangerous things happen to these people in these fields of work in this industry. And nothing is done about it. Nine times out of ten, nothing is done about it, okay? And honestly, it made me not want to do extra work anymore. Like, I have a post about this on my Patreon. You guys want to read about it on my Patreon? It's on my Patreon. I do weekly blog posts over there about the things that go on with Harry and her world but I basically made a post talking about I think I hate my job I was like I think I hate my job if you want to go read that four dollar on tier on Patreon by the way I will have it linked down below for you guys that do want to check that out um but I was like I think I hate my job and this was after that happened so yeah <sighs> now moving on it made me not want to do extra work no more and I considered background acting as my day job to help fund my acting career and like you know my YouTube career, my career as being a content creator, my career as being an entrepreneur, my career as being a freelancer, okay? To, my career to help me do what I actually want to do, okay? It's just not worth it no more. Like at this point it's just not worth it no more and honestly it made me even question if I still want to work in this industry in the first place because I enjoy working in the independent film market way more than I do on big stuff okay. I enjoy indies way more way way more okay because of how they treat people like i was seeing numerous people tell their stories about the horrible things that have happened to him on set because of the rise of this iossi strike and i'm glad that we are finally addressing the elephant in the room that we have been wanting to point out forever okay the film industry treats its workers that are not producers or actors or directors terribly okay they treat them like absolute ass crack okay so it made me just question do I still want to work in this industry in the first place because of how they treat people who aren't in a certain rank or aren't in the same rank as them okay like both extra stand-ins photo doubles and crew okay because crew gets treated so so bad okay it's so sad okay they all deserve better they all deserve better all of these people who help make your favorite shows and movies are important okay do y'all want more of the 
fucking Zoom shows? Do y'all want more Zoom shows? Do y'all want more Imagine videos? Do y'all, okay? That is why this strike is important. I know y'all don't want that. I know y'all don't want that, okay? That's gonna happen again. Stuff like that is gonna happen again if y'all don't start treating these people in this industry, the people that help make Hollywood what it is, better. Okay, y'all gotta do better. Y'all genuinely need to do better, okay? So, will I be watching Just Beyond? Of course I'm gonna watch Just Beyond, okay? I'm not gonna be a total bitch about this situation and not watch the show because it genuinely looks great. Earl Stein ain't do nothing wrong. He ain't do nothing to me, okay? It was the crew. It was their fault. But, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was, yeah, Disney. We blame them, okay? But Just Beyond looks like it's gonna be great. I love horror. I love Goosebumps. I love The Haunting Hour. I love Fear Street, okay? I'm a big fan of Oral Stein, okay? So, um, I am gonna watch Just Beyond, but um, I will forever have bad memories associated with this show because of this situation right here. I will forever have bad memories associated with Just Beyond. I'm so sorry, okay? And if they decided to add more episodes um, later on, the show gets renewed for a second season. I hope it does. Will I go back? Most likely not, okay? Unless I am desperate enough to where I need a paycheck and need to pay my bills, I most likely would not be going back to work on Just Beyond, okay? I will just admire the show from afar, okay? Unless I am in a situation where I am that desperate, where I need to go, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But that is the end of this story time video, okay? That was a mess. That was a whole wild trip, okay? If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, okay? I have so many, like, stupid stories, y'all, okay? But this stupid story was, like, the only one that can really relate to, like, the content I post on my channel. I'm most likely gonna post all my other stupid story stuff on my Patreon, which you guys should check out. If you guys wanna, um, support me, hit that subscribe button down below because YouTube is not subscribing people. They are unsubscribing people thinking I'm not seeing it I look at my analytics I see it okay uh, I have patreon that's another way you want to support me I mentioned earlier most expensive tier is five dollars cheapest is the one link to that down below another way you can donate to me is buy me a coffee and buy me a Kofi I have a Kofi and a coffee link down below um want to support me for free um i have a web show called the progenies the progenies is basically a disney fan series well woohoo we just dragged disney i have a whole fan series for a disney thing it's basically uh, a continuation of disney channel's descendants in a more mature um realistic and prettier light okay the link to our show will be down below we should have a new episode coming out this friday and then we're probably gonna take another two week hiatus because y'all it's been so crazy in my life right now and i just can't stand it I, I just can't stand it i'm tired i can't catch a break i genuinely just cannot catch a break okay and if you guys want to support me for free oh wait and not free um I have merch. I have merch down below. Um, HarryGannahook.com is the website where you can get all my merchandise. I have so much new stuff coming. I have a new collection coming this Black Friday. So make sure you guys sign up on the mailing list so you'll get the notification about the Black Friday deals and products and all that jazz. Okay? Support me for free. Just follow me on everything at Harryana. Y'all, I am so close to being at 4K on Twitter. And I am so close to being at 10K on Instagram. And by the way, if you guys follow my regular Instagram, get it to 10K. And then if you get my store's Instagram to 2K, I will do a giveaway for merch. So, yeah, make sure you guys, you guys go follow me and support me and all that. Um, I think I'm done now. I think I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because this... This, my, this is one of my longest videos I have made yet. The ones on me where I just be talking shit are always the longest ones, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a night. It's been a pretty rough day for me. Um, love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. Will just blow your mind Buttercup like villain three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And blossom will leave them out of their rut Cherish and power puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From towns from Memphis, New York to LA The power puff girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they shocking You know no one can stop them all because of the
you know 